What's happening, guys? Keith here with your October 13th edition of the Impact Report. So we're just one day away from Bound for Glory. If you haven't checked out my review of the Go Home Show for Bound for Glory or my preview and predictions for Bound for Glory, you can do so by clicking the links at the top of the screen. So this past week's episode of Impact had 183,000 viewers and unfortunately did not rank in Cable's top 150. Um, the news kind of got unfortunate. After that, we learned that Impact Wrestling will be moving to 10 p.m. Eastern on Pop this month, and PWInsider.com had confirmed this. Uh, this Thursday's edition coming up, post Bound for Glory, is slated to air at 8 p.m. with a 10 p.m. replay. The following Thursday's episode, which is on October 25th, is slated to air at 10 p.m. Eastern. Impact sources have confirmed the 10 p.m. slot will be permanent from that point on, moving the company out of prime time. We are told the company was made aware earlier this week of the change. Impact had debuted on Pop TV on December 22nd, 2015, and their current TV deal with Pop runs through 1231, 2018. So I'm going to speculate a little bit here. I, I think this might have been due to Impact officials maybe meeting with Pop TV, and they said, you know what, we are not going to renew with Pop TV. At that point, Pop said, all right, you're not going to renew with us. We are taking you out of the primetime slot, putting you at 10 p.m., and uh, that's where you guys will sit until the deal runs out. Maybe Impact does have a plan here. Maybe they are going to Another TV network, we are not sure yet. Hopefully we'll find out more news on this in the coming weeks. But honestly, this does suck pretty much, at least a lot for me. I, I get up generally about 5, 5.30 every morning, so watching a TV show until midnight the night before, especially taking notes. I mean, I may have to move my review around a little bit. I don't know if I'm going to watch a replay Friday after work or, or what the plan is, but... We will get to that point when uh, when we get to it. So hopefully Impact does shed some light on this situation, maybe with a new TV deal in the coming weeks, but I guess this is what we're stuck with for now. Uh, so heading over to Impact's YouTube page, uh, we have the top three clips from this past week's episode of Impact. This is about 36 hours removed from them showing up on YouTube, number three, Austin Aries, Moose, and Killer Cross versus Johnny Impact, Eddie Edwards, and Falaba. This had 43,000 views. Number two, Ali Makes a Deal with the Devil. This had 60,000 views. And number one, Conan's Message from the Bosses before Bound for Glory with 62,000 views. So on the top three clips, we had over 160,000 views. Almost uh, what the impact viewership was for this week's episode at 183,000. But we did get some positive news. Uh, I think this was posted Thursday afternoon. Uh, impact Wrestling, a subsidiary of Anthem Sports and Entertainment Corporation, announced today that it has engaged Kings Highway Media LLC to assist and expand Impact Wrestling's video and content distribution across all platforms, traditional and digital, worldwide. Uh, we are delighted to have King's Highway Media join us at this pivotal time as we embark on a major initiative to expand our audiences and continue to build our brand, said Ned Ed Nordholm, president of Impact Wrestling. With an outstanding product, increasing fan engagement across all platforms, and a rapidly growing audience, we are confident that Andrew and his team will leverage our existing global footprint into new markets and seize the opportunity to grow our presence on alternative media platforms. Kings Highway Media is delighted to have been chosen to assist Impact Wrestling with the expansion of their global footprint, said Kings Highway Media managing partner Andrew Whit Whitaker. The 2017 acquisition by Anthem and the new creative management and branding of the now Ascendant Impact Wrestling makes this the right time to deliver Impact Wrestling's live pay-per-view events, 52 weeks of original programming, and immense content creation capabilities to more audience and fans worldwide. So that is great news to hear. Hopefully uh, this helps with uh, getting a new TV deal or something in that of that nature. So, recently, Austin Aries was a guest on the Talk is Jericho podcast. Uh, WrestleZone.com put up a transcript of all Impact Wrestling-related content that was talked about. 
First, Aries talked about Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix. He said, so both those guys, I think they're great talent. I think it's cool because they're both different. Pentagon's not your prototypical cruiserweight in the way you think of him. Think of a more La Parca type. He can fly, but he's more of a presence. He's more of the way he carries himself. He's a little bigger, a little stronger. Then Phoenix is the opposite. One of the top high flyers, top luchador cruiserweight style workers that I've been in the ring with. And obviously with both, with these guys being brothers, I mean, there's a certain connection there. So I got the pleasure of just kind of being the third guy in there. We did it WrestleMania weekend, and that was supposed to be a tag match that obviously changed everything, and that went so well that we said, well, let's just do this again for the title. And that was well received, and then again, really showing the philosophically and then stylistically of where Impact Wrestling is going. Uh, Austin Aries on the new Impact Wrestling regime. I'm a sports guy, and that's what a lot of times happens in sports teams. They bring in a new ownership team, and they want to bring their philosophy in. And I think, to your point, not only talent-wise, but I think, and this is the only thing I keep stressing to people going, oh, TNA, lol. It's like they kind of did that behind the scenes. They've cleared out all the old regime there's t there, too, and all the old mindsets, and the one old thought process, because I wouldn't be there if they hadn't. You know what I'm saying? It's a new place there. It's got the structure and foundation that was laid in the bones of the ship, so to speak. But we are all in there now, and we're rebuilding this thing. And it's going to be great, and I think there's a lot of potential, and I think people are starting to see it. Um, on the best places to work for an independent contractor... Aries says, I think right now that Impact Wrestling is the most fun place to work. I think it's the place I look forward look forward to going. I think it's the best locker room. What World Series of Wrestling is doing in Australia, I think also I want to tip my cap on that. Adrian Menaris has run probably the most professional tour that I've been on in my career, from logistics to just about everything. So positive things said by Austin Aries there. Um, ringside news.com has posted another article about Chris Jericho rumors coming to Impact Wrestling. Um, the article says Impact Wrestling is really needing star power at this point. They're slipping so much in the television ratings that Pop TV took them out of the prime time in spite of a roster heavy with talent. Unfortunately, there aren't as many of the big draws. However, Impact Wrestling has one big name in line in Chris Jericho. Our sources have confirmed with us that Impact Wrestling wants to sign Jericho to a short-term deal which would allow him to pretty much carry on as usual as long as he can make six dates for Impact Wrestling. Therefore, he would be still permitted to work NJPW's Wrestle Kingdom shows as well as the tour with Fozzie. Only time will tell if Y2J will take the deal, but it might be a very attractive offer since they aren't asking too much of him except for a handful of dates with this deal. At this point, there doesn't seem to be any discussion with WWE and Jericho for a return, but you never know if these new developments could change that. However, Jericho isn't interested in returning to an exclusive deal that would require him to work too much, seeing how he has so many other commitments at this point. I mean, if the six dates were true, I'm guessing the Bound for Glory show, the two tapings afterward, and then the three tapings in November at Las Vegas, so... We will see. We will see tomorrow night. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thanks for checking out my video. I will be back here Monday for my Bound for Glory review. And until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.